our mind, our carnal mind lets the things run away with. <coughs> Might be out of control, though, but I'm sure you he's still very much out of control. He certainly is. And the Lord, now you got something on your heart. Thank the Lord for being here, Brother Paul. Thank the Lord for each and everything He does for us. No, I always say He is everything. And as you just said, you know, we, we almost purchased a car Saturday and we prayed and prayed and prayed. Lord, if it's not your will, Hello, do right? not let us get this car. Do not let us get this car. We went through the whole process of getting that car, got the paperwork filled out and everything, and we drove it. We drove it up there and got it detailed. <laughs> Come down there and park it. Jonah went out there to get in that car. Didn't even start. <laughs> Tom said, if I don't leave in this car tonight, it's not. Right. We ain't taking it. Yeah. And sure enough, we didn't take it. And I thank the Lord for letting us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Bless you are. Right. Yes. 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 about it all throughout the Bible and it's been mm -hmm. said for you know thousands and thousands of times over the last couple thousand years that the end is, is near mm -hmm. and uh, you know the end is only a breath away mm -hmm. from each and every one of us That's true. it's, it's uh, regardless of whether the world is no more the end is only a breath away yeah. and yes. um, all that's been going on with, with the, the terrorism and Iran and, and Iraq and the, the troops being deployed and it, it makes you realize that it's really, really close. It's really, really close. And I have a good friend of mine that her son is a Marine and he's been, been home for the last couple of weeks but um, he told her it'd be at least a year before he got to come back and he already knows that if we have to move more troops in that he's headed on over there. So. Um, do remember those families. Remember those those men and women that are that are over there and 
Honestly, when, when I heard the strikes hit last night, my heart started breaking for the Iranians that don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're loving a, a man that is gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm loving a Lord and God that's everything. Yeah, yeah. And, um, so, we, we've, you know, the, I noticed the sign when we come in tonight is they're not a cause. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's, a, there's a little small group here in this building that, that we regularly worship with that we're just longing to see them come to know the Lord. But there is a great big world out there. Yes. And the strength we gather here, we've got to take it back out to the battlegrounds. And we've got to let the Lord show in our lives because we are the only vessels that he has to use here. And that's yes. what we're here for. And for nothing else, we're here to serve him that's right. and him only. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Very true, amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we know these things are going to come to pass. Yeah. We really do. Yeah. Well, we're reminded of it, Randy. Be wars and rumors of it. sister testifying about she'd been to two funerals tonight or today and, and the one preacher preached on salvation and uh, she said it's good to know it's good that we need to know that we're saved oh, yeah. not that we think we know not that maybe we know but it's good that we need to know beyond the shadow of a doubt I got some scripture on me if the Lord will let me read it uh, he gave it to me uh I guess a, a couple weeks ago, and <coughs> I wasn't sure where he'd have me use it at. I've only stood maybe a couple times, so I'm going to pray. And uh, 
But every time I walked in the doors of that church, he kept reminding me of that scripture, and he kept mm -hmm. burning my heart with it. Mm -hmm. And then the brother preached the other night Place. about that spiritual anorexia, and, yeah. Yeah. and he said when he said when God called you to preach, he told him you do whatever you could, and I told the Lord the same thing. I'd do whatever I could, and I tell you what, I've already. He just recently called me, and I've already failed him so many yeah. times, and I don't want to do it no more because he told me not too long ago there will be a price to pay if I don't do what I'm told. Yeah. 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 Right. So if you have your Bible, if you could open to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 9. God bless your heart, boy. And I just, I just want everybody to know, don't... If the Lord's calling you, if the Lord's drawing on you, don't don't wait till the preacher man's done. Don't mm -hmm. wait until any, that altar's open right. anytime you need it. Right. Don't right. right. think that right. I gotta wait till this is done. Right. I've seen people right. do that, and I've seen that spirit pull from them and draw away from them from doing that. Bless the Lord. <clears throat> so Acts chapter eight, starting in verse nine. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city use sorcery and bewitching the people mm -hmm. of Samaria, sure giving out that himself was some great one, <laughs> to whom they all gave heed from least to greatest, saying, This man is a great power of God. Bless him, Lord. And to him they had regard, because, he, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Mm -hmm. Bless Bless but when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were bap baptized both men and women. Yeah. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, <laughs> who when they were come down, <coughs> prayed for them That's that the they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now remember that. They were just baptized. They believed and they were baptized, but that Holy Ghost hadn't come yet. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And Simon saw that through laying on to the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Notice it says the gift of God. Remember that for just a second. Thou hast, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent. Therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken may come upon me. And if you look over into, that's all I want to read from there. Um, if you... If you notice over in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by, I want to read it, I know it, but I want to read it because I make sure I say it right. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It's not a gift of God, it is the gift of God. And I guess my thought was, I, I, I thought about this for a while when I read that, and, and, and hearing what's been testified on and preached on, my thought is, <coughs> you have the gift. Is your gift the true gift of God? See, and I had to look back upon myself for that, the true gift of God, because there was a time when I thought I was saved. See, I was raised up believing in God all my life, and when I was a young child, I was baptized in the Lord. When my parents, well, I was raised Catholic now, and, and they thought when you were young, baptize your child in God, 
it because if something was to happen, they'll automatically go to heaven. So yeah, there was my baptism. And then as I came up through life, I was always raised, believed in God, and I always yeah, did. My Grammy, she was a great woman of God, and she always talked to me about God and the Lord Praise Jesus Christ. And she told me he died on a cross. Yeah, he was Praise born of a virgin. He lived yeah, a perfect yeah, life. And he rose the third day for us. And I believe that. I truly believe that. I still wasn't saved. So now I got baptism and belief. But where to go? That I went through my life thinking, oh, I believe and, and I'm going to heaven and I'm doing good. But still, there was something missing there. I didn't know what it was. I remember I was on a job site one day and it was a job site out in the middle of nowhere. You can ask Charles back when Claremont was just a baby down in Florida when it was growing. There was nothing out there and I was in the middle of nowhere and this guy shows up out of nowhere and he walks in on my job site. I'm the only one there. And he says, do you know the Lord? I said, well, of course I know the Lord. I've known him ever since I was a child. And he says, repeat this prayer. So, and I'm not knowing, I'm ignorant in the word. So I repeat this prayer and he puts his hand on me and he says, you're saved. And I'm like, all right, I'm saved. I've got it made. I'm going to heaven. I still wasn't saved. I still wasn't saved. There was just something that just wasn't right in there. So I started thinking about Simon. What does he do? He goes and bewitches the people, kind of in the same way, making himself known beyond all people. And then what happens? The truth comes. The truth comes to that city, and it's preached to everybody. And people were looking at Philip, and they were believing on what he was preaching. They were believing that Jesus come to die for their sins and all. The Bible says they were believed and baptized. But that's as far as it goes. And word has to go out to the other apostles to come and, and lay hands on them if you don't have it. And, and I was even talking with Bubba about this the other day. And, and see, they didn't really know the Holy Ghost back then. It, had, it was a new thing to them. It's not like now where we know there's the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they all work as one. So they had to come down and they had to help understand and bring that Holy Ghost to him, if you will. But what does Simon do? He still looks at him. He wonders. It says he wondered. Now, if he actually had what Jesus was to give him, he wouldn't have been wondering. We talked about it. That spirit spreads breast to breast and speaks to one another. But he still didn't have something in him. So what does he do? He offers them money. You're not going to get to heaven by offering any money. It says it's a gift of God. So he offers them money. And what do they say to him? They say, you have neither a lot nor partaking in this. He tells him that he, he perceives that he still has gall and bitterness in him. He told him to go and repent. See, that, that's what I, where I was. I was that what I call that part-time Christian. I went through life living, thinking, oh, I've got it made, I'm good, I know where I'm going, but I didn't. There was just something in there, something that just, when I got around people, like Christian people, I just, I wanted to try to fit in, but I just couldn't. I just kind of stuck out a little bit because I didn't understand how that spirit worked and how that spirit felt. And my question is, just like me, I thought I was saved. I, I had an encounter with God. He showed me the Holy Ghost one day. I was sitting in a church in Florida, and the Holy Ghost appeared before me. And, and I was sitting there looking at it, and I was awestruck. It was just this beautiful thing in the church. Yeah. And when it left, I felt it go through me and pass through me. And that was my testimony. That's what I went on. But when I gave it to a true Christian, they just, hmm. There was just something about it that didn't stir with me. How was your testimony? Have you even been able to give a testimony? I've got a friend who claims to be saved. It's the one I was talking about the other night. He claimed his grandma was saved and she's getting ready to die. And I said, give your, tell her to give your t her testimony to the family to set him at ease. Well, she's got dementia. I said, it doesn't matter. This is part of the spirit. It's not part of the mind. The mind's enmity with God. Therefore, it doesn't apply to the laws of it. It's in that spirit. I said, if you tell her and she's truly saved, that spirit will come. And it'll let her family know. And maybe it'll wake somebody up in your family. And then what does he say to me? He comes and he goes, well, you know what? She's, she's kind of talked about it some, but nothing really ever came when she said it right away. But we just kind of eased into it and it was okay. That's not okay. That spirit's supposed to bear witness one to another. And then there I, there I was living my life, as I call that part-time Christian. I would go through life, and, and like the Bible says, with the sower of the seeds, I would accept that seed, and I would take it, and I'd be all happy when I left church, and then I would get out into the world, and then here comes the thorns and the thistles popping up, the problems and the cares of the world coming into my life, and just choking that word out, and what do I do? I drop that word, and I get over into the 
to the world, and then I, somebody does me wrong, and I want to do something bad to them to get back to it. That's not Christian life. That's not godly life. That's the, Jesus says you got to love your brother as yourself, and if you can't even do that, we need to search our souls. And here comes Simon, and what does he do when they tell him to go and repent? He doesn't even want to take it upon himself to go to the Lord and give himself to the Lord for forgiveness. He asked them, well, why don't you go ahead and do it for me? Have you done that? Have you asked other people, well, you just pray for me and, and, and I'll, I'll see how it goes. And I, I got a real burden for somebody in this church. I know it. Mother asked the other day, he said, he said, check your salvation. Know if it's real. I know mine's real. I can lay my head on my pillow at night. I can think about it. Anytime I think about it, it takes me right back to that hardware store. Even that conviction that's set up in my heart, it takes me right back to Bubba's house that night when God came to me in a dream. And, and somebody I knew named Mr. Corbett was taking the Lord's name in vain. And I'm like, oh, I don't believe in any of that. And God told me to my face in that dream. He said, why? You're lost. That's when conviction set up on me. I woke up that next day and I told my wife, I said, I'm lost. I know I'm lost. And I dealt, I dealt for two or three months going through that. We went back down to Florida and I was in the most miserable way. And I just thought about it. And I was stopping my truck. I remember stopping in my truck and, and just looking up into the sky and crying out, Lord, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I just I don't know what to do. And, and it, took us, it took a hurricane to get us to go there for me to figure out I was lost. But we took that vacation, and lo and behold, we came. And, and I, came, I came to that play that night, the gates of heaven. And, and I heard that word preached after that, and I, I had to humble myself before the Lord. See, that was Simon's problem. He didn't want to humble himself. He had that pride about him. And there's so many people so many people that claim to be Christians that say, I've accepted the Lord Jesus and I've, I've said this prayer or I've done this, I've been baptized and I believe. Well, baptism and belief isn't enough. The Bible says you must come to God with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. So you have to humble yourself before the Lord. You have to realize you're a sinner and you're not worthy of anything. This is a gift of God. It's not. I know the Bible talks about rewards and stuff and I've heard some Christian. matter of fact, we're doing a job for one that believes you can lose your salvation and I was talking with him and he's like well see it talks about you lose your rewards and I had to think about that for a minute reward is something you work for the Bible says salvation is a gift of God it's not a reward of God and it says it's the gift of God it doesn't say just a gift it's the gift of God so you have to look into your heart and look into yourself and really just as they say I guess shell down the corn and see Really, where you stand with the Lord. Can, have you given your testimony? Since you've been saved, have you ever given your testimony? Have you ever been able to go up to what we call brother and sister and share your story when God saved you? I know some people say, oh, I don't remember where it happened at and stuff, and but I know it did. Well, I tell you what, what God did for me that day, that's something I will never forget. I may not remember the exact date someday, but I'll right. never forget where I was when I accepted the Lord Jesus exactly. Christ in my heart. And I tell you what, he gave me three chances that night. I sat there in the back of that hardware store listening to that word, and my heart was pounding so hard. And, and I just said, Lord, please, I'm too big of a man to get up in front of these people. And sure enough, preacher man said, don't be too big of a man to get up in front of these people. Oh, Lord, please. Oh, my gosh, you heard me. I said, just bring that altar to me. Not even a second later, the preacher man was picking up the altar. I'll bring it to you. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, yeah. my gosh. And right before that, I knew it was my last chance. This was it. I said, Lord, just bring somebody my way. And sure yeah. enough, yeah. the Lord had something going on with, with Bubba, and he happened just to be in the back of the church that night. And he walked by my way, and I don't remember every, anything after that. I don't even remember my feet touching the floor from the back of the church to the front. Yeah. And all I remember is hitting that altar and, I think I wasn't even worried enough just to be on the altar. I was under the altar in my heart. And people say, well, what do you say when you go to repent? And you just, you had the sorrowness of the heart. I don't know what I said. All I could say was I'm sorry. Everything I've ever done in my life to offend God, to offend my neighbor, to offend everybody, I was sorry for because Jesus went and took all those sins upon himself for me, not just for me, but each and every one in here too. What kind of love is that? There is no love greater than that. A love we can't even comprehend. 
it's a love beyond all comprehension. And, and for us to just think that, oh, all we got to do is just believe. I know the Bible says, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. But it also says we must repent. It also says we must have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. So maybe you do believe and, and maybe you were baptized, but have you really repented to the Lord? Have you really just come to the Lord and said, just gave your heart to the Lord and know Jesus says in order for you to come unto me my father which sent me must first draw you there's a drawing power and I often thought of that I mean I knew when Jesus drew me I could feel it but like you had said the other day when you felt something trying to push you up out of your seat it was I, ha I was leaned back in my seat and my legs were straight because it felt like something was trying to lift me up out of the seat but I thought about that I thought about that drawing power and I've heard people say that God doesn't pay attention to anybody that's lost no matter when you're lost, God doesn't pay attention to any of that. I don't believe that because I believe in the beginning when God picked up that dust and formed Adam and he breathed life into him. He gave Adam a piece of him. There's a piece of God inside you. Even you lost man, there's a little piece of God inside you. And that's that drawing power. He wants that back. But you got to wait till he draws you. You can't do it on your own terms. My daddy told me that one day. He said, I don't need Jesus to get saved. I can do it when I want. I'm telling you, you can't do it when you want. That drawing power has to come. You have to feel something inside. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. He said, open up. I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. And he'll come with you and he'll become one with you. That's the gift of that Holy Ghost. He said, it's expedient that I go away, that the comforter may come. That's what he's brought for us is that comforter. When that drawing power, when you come up here and you get that new life, that comforter comes inside you. It's if you look it up, the translation from Kumpner, it means helpmate. So isn't that, that's amazing that God did that. He made a helpmate for us in the flesh, and he made a helpmate for us in the spirit. That will lead us and guide us and direct our ways. So uh, my question is, is your gift the gift? Look inside yourself. Search your heart. Don't go. To, don't send yourself to hell thinking, oh, I'm a good Christian and I'm believing. I'm going to go. I think we talked about it the other night. They said, ask yourself if you're truly saved. And, and I, you know, I heard so many testimonies that night. God put it on my heart that night. But I said, well, well, Lord, everybody in here is saved. Everybody's testifying and, and saying they're saved. But it just kept stirring on my heart. Yeah, yeah. There's a burden we got to have, church. And, That's right. And it, it, it's, I remember, I mean, I, I haven't been a Christian too long as some of you were raised in it and I hear your testimony like I got saved when I was 30, 33 or 34 years old but, but I remember even back then the burden the church had I remember the day I got saved I was just I was telling Bubba I said I don't remember any person that was even in the benches I think they were all on the floor praying before before that happened we got to help share that burden we got to help bear it for one another so I love you church that's all he gave me I appreciate you
Bless you, man. Thank you, Thank you.